Moltres farming up, firing off the Sky Attack on the CMP tie. Sky Attack going to be massive overkill. Get that Polyrath out of here. The opponent sends out Reggie Steel. You might have heard a myth, Reggie Steel's thick. Moltres is here to tell you, it's not. Welcome back to the channel. Buckle up, because today is going to be one hell of a ride. The OG Kanto region has always been my favourite, and I like to meme and dream, so I was running all three Kanto. Legendary birds in their shadow form on the same team in the Open Ultra League. Of course, Ultra League is no longer with us. I'm pretty sad, as I think it's objectively better than Jungle Cup. However, it's not really the right time to post this content. I happen to have a little look in my battle submission folder and shout out Game Master. He's running the exact same team in the Jungle Cup. So we have got a compilation of Jungle Cup battles with this team, followed by my own battles in the Open Ultra League. Without any further ado, let's get into the battle. And in game one, Game Master leads Moltres into what else other than, of course, Vigoroth. Niantic, why don't you just rename all these theme cups fucking Vigoroth Cup? Because that is literally all you see. Game Master fires off the OV on the CMP tie. The opponent was actually baiting with a body slam, although it didn't really look like a bait. As Moltres near got one shot, we see Game Master make the aggressive pivot into Zapdos, fire off the drill peck, forcing the opponent's final protect shield. Game Master going to shield in return, and this time the opponent full sends the rock slide. Game Master then farms up five Thunder Shocks and the Drill Peck. Once again, winning the Charge Mirror Pro event. Get that Vigor off, off my screen. The opponent now sends out a Bomber Snow. Game Master looks to throw the Drill Peck, and the opponent makes a savage catch, catching the Drill Peck onto Skarmory, but undeterred. Game Master going to farm up, bank the Sky Attack Pivot into Moltres, but Moltres gets farmed down. We now send out Articuno. Game Master going to respect the potential Brave Bird. The opponent fires off the Sky Attack, which Articuno, being the bulkiest of the trio, could have survived. But the safe play was to shield, just fire off the ICU in, get him with a Skarmory, and that's going to be game over. As we've got the Drill Peck Bank, the opponent continuing to play out the inevitable, but this is game over. So let's talk about Game Master's team. He actually said in the battle submission that he didn't see the point in double moving both Articuno and Moltres because he just likes to throw straight nukes, and I respect it. Heading into the next battle. Not a particularly good lead, although really, what leads are you looking for? Running Shadow Moltres. The opponent goes straight for an Aerial Ace, aka Aerial Ace, and this is one of the few moves that Moltres can tank. This overheat is of course resisted, but Shadow Moltres hits like a truck. The opponent crap their pants, putting up that Protect Shield, and we see the safe switch into Articuno. We see the instant No Shield deployed. The opponent full send the neutral ice beam and Articuno once again shows its bolt. We then return fire with the icy wind, forcing the opponent's final protect shield, setting up a two to no shield advantage for the mighty Shadow Zapdos. Aerial Ace, of course, from this range will be secure in the knockout, and it is Zapdos time. Let's go, Zapdos. Game Master could have fired off the drill pack on the CMP tie, but it looks like he's going for the one shield. Thunder Shock farm all the way down. The opponent not one is getting farmed down. Pivot out into the Sandcastle. Honestly, Niantic, what is that Pokemon design? Again, we see Game Master continue to farm up, looking to maximise his energy rather than to cure the knockout before the opponent can potentially debuff us. RNG. Oof, we get debuff. That's rough. Game Master might need to potentially reset his debuff at some stage. The opponent still has Mantine alive as a sacrificial swap as well. Out comes Wish Daddy Cash. Usually drill back would two shot, but with a debuff, it certainly won't. Game Master continuing to farm up. We look to catch the Scold onto Moltres. Unsuccessfully, the opponent is forced to throw. Does the opponent look to make the catch? No, they don't. We fire off the drill pack immediately, but is drill pack enough to knock out? No, it's not, but we resisted Thundershock, farm down Wishcash, Thundershock, farm down Mantine, and take that game. In the next battle, Wish Daddy Cash looking for some redemption. Unfortunately, we are getting outpaced to the skull before we reach our single move of Overheat. The opponent full sends the skull, getting the attack drop, but Moltres, firstly, doesn't care about typing, and secondly, has an enormous attack. The debuff over, he almost still knocks them out. That is absurd damage. And then we see the pivot into Articuno to soak the energy. Game Master looking for the Ice Shard farm down. The opponent makes a last second charge move. They fire off yet another Scold. Articuno just used as the third and the fourth shield. We send out Zapdos. Zapdos gets the Thunder Shock farm down and the opponent sends out Umbreon. Game Master going for the hard hitting Thunderbolt. 
Logically, Umbreon users don't usually shield, and this one doesn't, and that does a lot of damage. Rocking big bad Umbreon down below half health. Game Master now, all shields down. This is looking so rough. Game Master needs to pull off some shenanigans to win this battle. He fires off one Thunder Shock and the Drill Peck for optimal fast move time, and the opponent's still reluctant to shield. We pivot into Moltres, and it's Obstagoon in the back. There's only one win con. The opponent looking to call a bait, and we haven't even got a Sky Attack. Game Master falls into Overheat. Does the opponent respect the damage? They do not get that Obstagoon out of here. The opponent looking to two shield flex, and Zapdos says, you're not flexing on me today, and somehow we pull off the dub. GG's. I've got a feeling I'm going to lose my voice again. In the next battle, we see Moltres into Vigoroth. We get some lag, but I think we caught up. The opponent goes straight for a body slam, and that just does so much damage. Again, we force in the OV. Overheat! Oof, go shielded. We've been seeing Game Master pivot, sending out Zapdos and going straight for the Drill Pack. As always, winning the CMP tie. Drill Pack forces the opponent's final protect shield. Of course, we are going to shield in return. The opponent fires off the body slam bait, which means they're going to outpace to the second body slam game master this time. Not willing to shield the opponent, then snipe with Dragonite. But surprise, trainer, we have a very nasty surprise for you. Look at this ice shard damage. Game master going for the one shield. Ice shard farm all the way down. Please be double dragon. Please be double dragon. The opponent sends back out Vigoroth, but Vigoroth's going to be straight in and straight out. Icy win secures the knockout. Okay, Swamper isn't a dragon, but this might be playable. We're going to need to make a catch. We fire off the Icy Wind. Icy Wind lands. The second one will be lethal. Game Master looks to make the catch. The opponent commits to the Mud Shot farm down. We're getting a whole heap of weak connection. Debuffed Hydro Cannon, unfortunately, still secures the knockout. And the opponent is going to take the dub. Heading into the final battle in the Jungle Cup, we see another Mantine in the lead. This opponent, much like the last one, going straight area last. Moltres might be squishy, but we do survive an aerial ace. I really hope this overheat lands. I want to see how much resisted damage it does. Another opponent shields. Trainer, why are you shielding? You're a water type. You resist fire. We say switch into Articuno and we draw out Scrafty. We go straight for the Icy Wind. People are petrified of these birds in this cup. They're shielding everything. Once again, we've got a 2 to no shield advantage for the mighty Shadow Zapdos. The opponent looking to pop their way through Articuno, vamping up their attack. But Articuno just going to continually lower it with the Icy Wind. Icy Wind won't be lethal from this range. It's counter versus Ice Shard. The opponent manages to get the counter farm down and they leave with a power-up punch. We send out Moltres looking to sponge the energy. Power-up punch actually doesn't knock out and we see the instant pivot looking to switch into Zapdos. Zapdos manages to make a catch. We shield up the aerial ace and the opponent then sends out the quagman. We've still got a protect shield too high behind. The opponent going to be unable to bait an aquatel and land the stone edge. We fire off the drill peck. Drill peck does land. The opponent builds up to a potential stone edge. And we see game master respect it. The opponent of course does bait. We then see game master farm up. Maximizes energy throwing the drill peck on the CMP side. Get that quag sire out of here. Back out. Comes Mantine. We reach the thunderbolt. Fire off the drill pack, but regardless, either move is going to pick up the dub. GG's and thanks for playing. Huge shout out to Game Master, showing us the power of the legendary Kanto birds in the Jungle Cup. For the latter half of the video, these are going to be my own battles with the same team in the Open Ultra League. I'm running the team in a slightly different order. And in game number one, the reason why is because Polyrath, without a doubt, is the most common lead. And Zapdos has a heavy pacing advantage. The opponent say switches into Giratina, running Ancient Power. We are five times weak to rock, so I'm going to shield the first move and then return fire with the Icy Wind, which not only hits the super effective, but lowers their damage output. Even a debuffed, non-stab Ancient Power from a defense-weighted Pokemon like Giratina does so much damage. We're already left deep into the red. We do reach the second Icy Wind and the opponent doesn't make a play at switch. Instead, send up Poliwrath and look to get a running start. Poliwrath does get the counter farm down. However, we're actually going to CMP tie to the Icy Wind. So I'm going to send out Zapdos, fire off the Drill Peck on the CMP tie. Drill Peck won't be lethal, but the opponent likely shields, petrified of the mighty Zapdos. We do force the opponent's final protection. I'm going to sponge his energy, and it is Moltres time. I send in Moltres. 
the opponent continuing to stay and then play to the CMP title. They do not win. Shout out home size Henry for that quote. Get that polygraph off my screen. The opponent's final Pokemon is the basic bitch tin can Reggie Steel. Ranked number one on PV Pope. They're going to be straight in and straight out. Vanquished back to their Pokeball from full hell. Let's go. Heading into the next battle. We see another polygraph in the lead. So I think the correct way of playing this, if the opponent continues to stay in, is go straight Thunderbolt, as one drill pack won't be lethal, whereas Thunderbolt will. Zapdos and Poliwrath pace at the same speed to the Thunderbolt and the Icy Wind. There's seven for the first, six for the second. So you can see they obviously lower my attack, but with the Thundershock damage, this Thunderbolt will still be lethal. Does the opponent want to two shield? The opponent does look to two shield, and we're just going to take our shield advantage. Icy Wind, of course, from this range does secure the knockout. I can send in Moltres. We're going to CMP tie with a Sky Attack and the Scold. You can see I did attempt to press it, but we get one turn bring in. So fuck it. If the game wants me to shield and farm down, that's exactly what we're going to do. We get the full farm down and we leave with so much energy. The opponent sends out Skeledurge. I fire off two Wing Attack and the Sky Attack for optimal fast move timing. Sky Attack does so much damage. The opponent then pivots out into Verizian. I over farm. Verizian's going to be straight in and straight out. When Skeledurge does return, we're going to fire off two wing attacks and the BM overheat. And that is going to be all she wrote. GG's and thanks for playing. Heading into the next battle. We see Scrafty in the lead. If you're thinking, oh, you're just winning lead after lead. Don't worry. You're about to see some dreadful leads coming up. We fire off the drill peck on the CMP side to a potential foul play. Fuck it. If you want to foul play me, trainer, enjoy yourself. The opponent does full send the foul play. In the Ultra League, we're able to survive one and even reach the second drill peck. The second drill peck forces the opponent's final protect shield. The opponent actually throw energy as well. A bit of a questionable play. They go for the power punch, a vamping up their attack. I can now send out Moltres. If the opponent farms two of essential foul play, which they have, I am going to respect it. A boosted foul play probably one shots us. We correctly shield up the foul play. The opponent then send out a confusion Cresselia. Interesting. I'm just going to YOLO the OV as the opponent has no protect shields. We'll end the OV and we're going to send out Articuno looking to sponge the energy. They only throw five confusions. This can only be a Moonblast. Whoa, they go for a Grass Knot Bait. Trainer, that's so greedy. I attempted to Ice Shard down, but as the opponent's receiving the energy for the potential Moonblast, I am going to knock him out with the Icy Wind. Let's see what the opponent wants to do. They send out Scrafty, so I throw one Ice Shard and the Icy Wind. Of course, three turn into two turn. You just want to throw out odd numbers. The opponent not wanting to get farmed down, pivot out into Sylveon. Sylveon going to be greeted with the Icy Wind. Icy Wind won't do all that much damage, but will lower their attack. We then pivot back out into Moltres. I'm going to fire off the Sky Attack. Sky Attack from this range, easily enough to knock out. And Scrafty is going to get Wing Attack farmed down, and I'm able to take that game. So after three good leads, we get Reggie Rock. We're five times weak to Rock. How the hell do I beat this thing? At this stage, I've got no idea, but we're going to shield the first Stone Edge and I hope to sneak the Thunderbolt through two Protect Shields. Please, trainer, don't shield. Please. Okay, that's a good start. The opponent is going to outpace to the second Stone Edge before we reach the Thunderbolt. So I throw the Jewel Peck, just hoping the opponent would let it go, knowing that's resisted. The opponent's shield, and that's probably worse for me, as I've still got no idea how I can get rid of this Reggie Rock. I send out Articuno. Articuno, double weak to Rock. I'm not going to shield. We're just going to sacrifice it and hope I can wing attack down in five. Get there, get there, get there. No! This Reggie Rock is running through my team. We're going to shield up the Stone Edge. We are going to be able to wing attack farm down. However, the opponent actually don't want that to happen. Send out Talonflame and this is just game over. I throw the Sky Attack. The opponent for some reason doesn't throw. So we are at least going to force the opponent's final Protect Shield with this Sky Attack. But I'm going to get one of the world's most brutal beatdowns and harshly reminded why this is a meme slash dream team. As sometimes it's a dream, but more than likely it happens to be the meme. In the next battle, once again, our target has been acquired. As always, no baits on this channel. We're full sending the Thunderbolt. Does the opponent respect the damage? Oh, of course they do. I'm happy to shield once in this matchup. I never shield twice as Moltres with no protect shields is very dead weight. We look to throw on the CMP type, but this opponent smartly goes to the over farm. So I imagine they're going to two shield. We do manage to force all shields down. The opponent smartly throws 
at perfect timing, one before the dual pack, Icy Wind secures the knockout. This is somewhat tricky. We're going to send in Moltres and we're in the bait game. I am going to respect the potential skull and this opponent baits me like a savage. We're then going to farm up. If I can't wing attack farm down before they reach the Icy Wind, I am going to throw the Sky Attack on the CMP type. We've now got no Protect Shields too high behind. The opponent then sends in Gator. We're going to look to catch the Hydro Cannon onto Articuno. This, of course, isn't a great matchup for us. However, with a debuff, even an overheat that does do slightly more raw damage, then a sky attack wouldn't have been lethal. The opponent banks a charge move, then send out Trevenant, giving me a free win con. We land the icy win. We manage to ice shard farm all the way down. We're going to throw the ancient power. Ancient power certainly puts it into sky attack or overheat range. The opponent does have the charge move bank. They farm all the way down, but trainer, if you thought you were winning that CMP tie, you really need to go back to school as we've got a 176 attack. Compared to your 160, it isn't even close. In the next battle, we see Skeledurge in the lead. Two turn into five turn. Optimal timing is either two quick moves or seven. So I throw seven thunder shocks and the drill peck. The opponent continues to farm up, allowing me to make drill peck number two. The second drill peck does land. The opponent farm up to 100 energy and I make a catch onto Moltres as this is where I assume they're going to throw the disarming voice. The opponent answers my Moltres say switch with for alligator. The opponent actually allowed me to reach the sky attack and this is going to do so much damage. Putting for alligator in a very nice range where I can come in and resist an ice shard farm down and get some energy together on my Articuno. Of course, with no energy, it's dreadful into Skeledurge. But if I get a huge farm down, the Ancient Power will be threatening the knockout. I've got two shields. I'm going to shield up a Hydra Cannon. Hydra Cannon, a pretty good move. You can see we do leave with the Ancient Power. I actually bank it, pivot into Zapdos. And we see a huge Core Breaker in the back. Oof, this is rough. We full send a Thunderbolt as it does do more damage. We get them down to around half health. We then come in, throw one ice shard and the icy wind. The opponent doesn't shield. Are you serious? Then pivot into Skeledurge. In the heat of battle, I was thinking, what's the hardest move left in the game? Shadow Ball. And if you're thinking, why do I think they haven't got Thunder Punch? Well, if you've got Skeledurge in the lead and Ampros in the back, surely you've got Trailblaze. Let's find out. Does the opponent have Thunder Punch? No, they don't. And somehow we're able to pull off the dub. In the next battle, we see the basic bitch Tin Can in the lead. Another reason why I led Zapdos is Zapdos is the only Pokemon on the team that takes neutral from electric. We throw the Thunderbolt on the CMP side to the potential Zap Cannon. Thunderbolt actually forces a Protect Shield. With that in mind, we're just going to take our shield advantage. We actually survive the Zap Cannon and we should even manage to get off another Thunderbolt. Annoyingly, of course, the opponent gets the debuff. That's going to mean this Thunderbolt is only going to do like 30, 35%. You can see it does get him into the yellow, but we've thrown a lot of Thunder Shocks. I recognise I'm going to get Lock on Farm down before the next Thunderbolt. So we just settle for the Drill Peck. You can see if I would have committed to it, I would have actually died at the move. Could have got it off. Depends if I got new mechanic, to be honest. We're going to send out Moltres. Of course, I am going to respect the incoming Zap Cannon. And people like to say content creators love to show their wins. I assume Sky Attack from this range would be lethal. Spoiler alert, it isn't. And the opponent is going to get off one further charge move. So I'm now forced to double shield. Jamie Finn, you are a potato. We do manage to get the full wing attack farm down. However, the opponent once again has Ampfrost. Wing corner is going to be sneaking this overheat through. Does the opponent respect the damage? Ugh, this is GG's. Even though this opponent doesn't have Thunder Punch, I am fucked. But of course the opponent's got Thunder Punch and that does so much damage. The opponent is going to outpace to Thunder Punch number two. And once again, my meme or dream team turns out to be the meme. GG's to that opponent. In the next battle, we see another Polyrath. Beautiful. The opponent stays switches into Dragon Breath, Giratina. And of course we answer with Articuno. If you're running Dragon Breath, you likely have Shadow Sneak, because if not, you're going to be dreadful into Steel Types. Hence, I don't shield the first Ancient Power, recognising that unlikely to have it. We return fire with the Icy Wind. The opponent choose to let it go. That is going to give us a very nice Ice Shard farm down. Polyrath probably returns. It has a huge counter farm down. However, we are going to lower their damage output, which means Zapdos will easily survive an Icy Wind. The opponent does get a massive counter farm down. We actually don't reach the second ice wind. I was really hoping to get that off, but it is what it is. We send out Zapdos. This is a regular polyrap. Icy wind doesn't get the same type of attack bonus because they're a water and fighting type. And just look at that damage. It does so much steel. The opponent then pivots out 
into a lowland nine towers we land the drill peck and then pivot into molt tread that drill peck damage is going to be absolutely clutched it definitely puts them into sky attack range i'm going to shield up the weather ball for a one wing attack and the sky attack looking to force the opponent's first protection the opponent actually opting to save two shields for polygraph and trainer that is going to be your downfall because from here i'm not going to throw another charge move i'm just going to commit to the fast move beat down we've got a combination of wing attack and thunder shock should i need it but Moltres carries the team to victory ggs and thanks for playing in the next battle we see glissapod in the lead a very nice lead for us although i have tanked the liquidation in the past and trust me don't do that it does so much damage we fire off the drill pack on the cmp tie i am going to respect the potential liquidation i don't see any reason to bait although this opponent clearly does bait him with an x is again we're going to farm up Look to throw on the CMP type. This opponent actually goes for the over farm drill pack. Forces their final protect shield. We're not an X's a range trainer. I promise the opponent throws the X's like an absolute potato. Allowing us to reach one further drill pack. Getting that glissopod off my screen. Out comes Charizard. I was thinking I would reach this drill pack. We actually get resisted. Wing attack farm down. Zapdos dies. We can now send out Moltres though to align it with this Charizard. As of course Articuno doesn't fancy tanking a blast burn. The opponent throw the Dragon Claw. I attempt to throw the Sky Attack, but the opponent makes a very nice catch, catching the Sky Attack onto Swampert. From here, we're just going to farm up. Look to catch the Hydro Cannon onto Articuno, saving our Protect Shield. As this is a non-Shadow Swampert, we actually survive two Hydro Cannons fairly easily. Looking at the health, I'm thinking I'm just going to look to Wing Attack, farm them all the way down, and Ancient Power, the return in Charizard. We get the full wing attack farm down leave with the ancient power and the opponent is going to concede the match. In the next battle we see Dragonite in the lead. Not particularly good for Zapdos but even worse for Moltres so I stay in, throw the drill peck on the CMP tie to the Dragon Claw. Drill peck forces us early shield advantage and at this stage I'm just going to say Zapdos thank you very much for your contribution. Dragon Claw isn't lethal, the opponent gets off one further Dragon Breath. I send out Articuno, the opponent pivots into Skeledurge and I answer with Moltres. I am going to respect the potential Shadow Ball. Of course with two Protect Shields the opponent baits with the Disarming Voice. I'm then going to farm up, throw the Sky Attack on the CMP tie. I really hope this is lethal. Moltres actually forces the opponent's final Protect Shield. The opponent wants to get me all shields down. Again they bait. Oof what a savage. Again I'm going to farm up, throw the next Sky Attack. On the CMP time, maximise my energy, Sky Attack, does secure the knockup, back out, comes Dragonite. I actually could have banked this move, a switch timer did just pop up, but when they returned it hadn't, so I take him out. With the Sky Attack, we pivot into Articuno, the opponent's final Pokemon is Venusaur, and that is going to be a very easy dub. The opponent can throw a Sludge Bomb, Sludge Bomb certainly isn't going to knock out from this range. We're going to Ice Shard Farm down and pick up the dub. Heading into the final battle of today's showcase, we see Tapu Fini in the lead. The opponent say switches into Registeel and they answer with Moltres in the two shield. This is by no means the best match of a zap cannon. Will one shot as the opponent fires off the zap. They get the attack drop, which is brutal. Undeterred though, we're full sending. Does the opponent respect the damage? OV even debuffed, still almost knocks them out. We reach the sky attack. Sky attack will be lethal from this range. The opponent opts to shield. Looking to make a player take and switch. And fuck it, trainer. You can have it. Zap Cannon does secure the knockout. They're in a perfect farm that range for Zapdos to come in. Get an energy lead and look to sweep the entire team. Zapdos gets the Thundershock farm down. The opponent sends out Skeledurge. We're going to farm up seven Thundershocks. And throw the Drill Peck for optimal fast move timing. Drill Peck lands. Rocking this crocodile below half elf. I'm going to burn the final shield here. The opponent baits with the disarming voice again. We're going to throw two thunder shocks and the drill peck. Where does the opponent want to burn their final shield? Drill peck goes unshielded back out. Comes Tapu Fina again. There is no bait and does the opponent respect the damage. Thunderbolt lands through the protect shield and Zapdos sweeps the team. GG's and thanks for playing. And unfortunately that is going to draw to a close today's showcase. Firstly, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Game Master for bringing this team in the Jungle Cup. That was some incredible spice. Would I recommend this team? Of course I wouldn't. It's got so many weaknesses. We're running Triple Flyer, of course. One Rock type, like when you saw Reggie Rock, you're just going to get destroyed. But my God, is it fun. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button. If you're new, 
consider subscribing if you like your battles featured on my channel. A link to our battles vision form is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.